Hey folks, Quilly Dean here, and welcome to my tutorial on how to make a multiplayer first-person shooter in Unity 3D. This is going to sound like it's going to be very complex, and there's certainly a lot of big complex questions to answer in the long term, but really the basics of it are not quite that bad. Now, if you have watched my first person shooter tutorial, there's going to be a few things that are going to be repeated because we're going to start things clean and, and from scratch, uh, but I think it's going to be for the best overall. Also, you may have downloaded in the past one of my multiplayer first person shooter games that I made for Let Em Dare. That was never really designed to be a tutorial. There's certainly a lot of problems getting that running, so we're going to make a make one of these that is really well suited to be a tutorial and you can follow along and uh, work through the code by yourself. So. I am going to be running, I'm running the free version of Unity, I am running in Unity 4.3 at this point. Uh, the code we're going to write is going to be pretty basic and very flexible Unity 3D code, which means it should actually work in uh, more than one version. I'm also going to be using Blender, and I'm specifically using Blender 2.69, but again, most of what we should, we're going to be doing is going to be able to work in most versions. So, what are we doing? What is our inspiration? Well, one of my favorite games, uh, my favorite multiplayer First person shooter of all times is the original Unreal Tournament. Man, I put so many hours into this. I just loved it. It was one of the first really, really good ones. I mean, I was a fan of Quake as well, but there's something about the first Unreal Tournament that just really did it for me. And specifically, one of the best and most popular maps for Unreal Tournament was something called Facing Worlds, which is what you're seeing here. And even later versions of Unreal Tournament still had the same basic facing world map, but you know, obviously done a little bit prettier. Now this was a capture the flag map, uh, it had some great sniping position, it had a handful of different weapons, a handful of different power-ups, um, uh, it had the teleporter feature, I, I'm trying to remember if it had a door or an elevator or anything like that, I'm not sure if it did or didn't, but uh, we're going to try to uh, replicate as much as we can of this, because it was a, just a great, absolutely a great, wonderful map. What we're going to do is just set up our project. In Unity, I've gone and created a new project. I've saved it in a new folder. It is absolutely blank. I haven't imported anything yet. Now, to save time, we are going to import a handful of things just to make our lives a little bit easier. Uh, we are going to start. We could go the route we did before where we programmed our own first person shooter controller. But I think this time around, we're gonna go ahead and import the uh, the basic one from Unity. We'll go and grab uh, we'll grab the whole set of it, and uh, we'll figure out what we want out of that in a moment. So if we bring in this character controller thing, you'll see it comes with both a third person and a first person controller. Technically, we don't need third person stuff. And there's a few other scripts and things we could do away with, but we'll leave the we'll leave that stuff in. Then we'll just pull in what we need to do at that point. We also need um, we need the code for our multiplayer. Now, we're not gonna start using it quite right away, but we're gonna go ahead and get it out of the way and import it right away. So let's go into the asset store. Uh, everything we're gonna do here is free. This is a free version of Unity. Blender is free, and we're only gonna use some free assets from the asset store, but they're so good. Specifically, we're gonna use Photon Unity Networking to get our multiplayer to work properly. So I'm gonna go ahead and import everything we need from that. So we'll do a quick search. I'll search for Photon Unity Networking. And it should come up as the default. Sometimes it's called pun. There we go. Photon Unity Networking Free. There is only a free version of this. And uh, you can just grab that and import it. And it's fantastic. We'll grab everything that's in there. And again, we might parse or pare down the file a little bit later. Now, while we're in here, we're going to grab one other thing that's not really needed, uh, but it's going to look nice and make our lives slightly easier. Um, Unity supports great procedural substances, like materials, basically. And there's um, there's a package called 18 Free Substances, I believe. Should be from Algorithmic, these guys that make the uh, a great substance tool. And there's lots of substances that you can just buy from here that are just fantastic. But this pack here, the 18 Free Substances, we're going to go and pull these in. And these are really great, high-quality textures. Well, they're not textures. They're not materials. They're something else altogether and they're very customizable like there's a brick texture well you can fool around and you'll see in a second here so we've pulled everything that we want to pull in going down in the project view over there the substance is free you can see them all if i bring in the uh, the brick wall um and uh, let's see i don't know if i can make this bigger uh in any appreciable way well i suppose what i can do if you'll bear with me for two seconds is grab the screen region and just say pull this in right over here. All right. So this texture here, nah, that's not a good view. Never mind. 
that was silly. But you can see in the, in the side here, there's lots of parameters that we can modify and the textures that get down there. Once you import it, you can see, you can change the age, the number of bricks. So the chunkiness of the wall, the, the, the depth, the relief, the embossing, all kinds of different things. Uh, I like this metal texture quite a bit. Um, there's a, uh, there's a handful of these. This, this stone one is also very handy to use quite a lot. Now, importing some of these projects actually uh, brought in another scene. So, and we don't, we don't want that. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna create a new scene for our project and don't save any of that. And let's go ahead and uh, save this right off as well. We're gonna go ahead and uh, just save the scene. It's gonna be in our project. I'm just gonna call this the uh, default scene for now. We'll work out the details later on. I'm just gonna work to get my project arranged. I'm gonna create a subfolder here. And I'm gonna call this, um, I'm gonna call this imported. And all I'm gonna do is shove all of our imported stuff in there. So when you look at the files, you're gonna be able to tell what we're making and what we just sort of used that was made for us. And why is it, uh, why is it stalled? There we go. Excellent. All right, everything is sorted exactly the way we want. Now, one other thing I'm going to do, just in case you, like me, use a concurrent versioning system, specifically I like to use Git. If you do that, it's very important to go into your project settings and go into editor. And for your version control, make sure to create the meta files. This is gonna enable you to actually do proper versioning system and share things with other people or do rollbacks and various things like that. It's also technically slightly better if you used uh, text-based asset serialization. It's still gonna work even if you don't, but it's gonna be better. Uh, and I think that is it for our initial setup. So we're gonna, I'm just gonna cut it here. That's the introduction to the video. We're making a multiplayer first person shooter. The map is gonna be based on the facing worlds map. And those are the plugins that we need. If you wanna do some extra research, the Photon Unity Networking, there's just Google that and you can find the documentation, get some, uh, some great tutorials to get you started very quickly there. Uh, I've also got a little bit of a networking tutorial on my channel as well. I'll try to include some links down below and also some annotations. But uh, in the next video, we're gonna open up Blender and we're gonna create a map so that we've got something to play around in. See you next time, folks. Bye-bye.